Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. We've just got a few hours to go before our fundraiser for the paleontology field trip in South Africa concludes, and we're excruciatingly close to our 120% goal. So let's do this final push to get as close as we can to that mark. Starting off the news this week, well, it's another slow news week paired with Benji Thomas busyness, so I'm afraid not too much. We have got a story about the Earth's crust, however, as researchers from the University of Bergen have tested deposits from all over the world. The tests on these billions of years old bits of our planet aim to help work out when exactly Earth's continental crust emerged. The date that they found was actually 3.7 billion years ago, which is 500 million more than previously believed. Despite the huge amount of time that they're working with, this is still a rather large time period, and potentially has massive implications for many of the oldest questions about this planet, like when did life begin and when did it evolve? And now over to Ben, who, for once, is going to show his face. Thanks, Doug. Up next is a very cool paper that reports on the earliest known fossil evidence for symbiosis between eukaryotes. Eukaryotes, the domain of life that we ourselves belong to, are actually pretty well known as fossils in the Proterozoic, the eon that lasted from 2.5 billion years to about 540 million years ago, becoming especially diverse towards the end. However, fossil evidence for symbiosis between eukaryotes is not very well documented in this time, despite it presumably having been an important reason for the success of the group. Now though, fossils from North China dating to the end of the Proterozoic have been discovered that preserve previously known ancient eukaryotes with small semicircular and disc-shaped objects on them, which have been found to be other eukaryotes that were living symbiotically on these organisms. The fossils, dated at 1 billion years old, are therefore now the oldest evidence of eukaryotic symbiosis in the fossil record of life on our planet, and not only shows that this evolutionary innovation may have been incredibly important in the success of these organisms, but also opens the possibility of new investigations into the complex interactions between ancient life forms in Proterozoic ecosystems. And finally for this week is another fascinating paper that has found some interesting evidence suggesting tetrapods might not have made it onto land quite as soon as some have thought before. The evidence for the transition onto land in our tetrapod ancestors is actually very contradictory, with trace fossils considered to be made by terrestrial tetrapods actually dating to long before the earliest body fossils of tetrapods in the late Devonian, and these late Devonian animals were still likely obligatorily aquatic, with the first definitely terrestrial forms only appearing in the early Carboniferous. The paper also explains how recent studies have found that an obligatorily aquatic mode of life may have persisted much higher up the tetrapod lineage than we'd realised, and this research further supports this. Analyzing the microanatomy of limb bones of tetrapods from early Carboniferous aged rocks in Nova Scotia, the paleontologists found that despite the variety in limb morphologies, these animals were still very much obligatorily aquatic right up until the first fully terrestrial members appeared, leading them to conclude that the mysterious trackways supposedly left by mid Devonian terrestrial tetrapods need to be carefully re examined, and calling for more fossil sampling to be done so that the first truly terrestrial tetrapods can hopefully one day be better identified. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben. Just a reminder again to check out our Thrinax fundraiser if you haven't already, and I hope you have an enjoyable week.